in this legislation to make sure that they've got it. We've included $71.5 billion in discretionary funding in this legislation, which is uh, $1.8 billion less in fiscal year 2014 and $398 million less than the budget request. And the bill does provide the full budget request of uh, $6.6 .6 billion for military construction projects. And although this is $3.3 billion less than last year, we recognize the Department of Defense needs to complete the European Infrastructure Consolidation Study and assess force structure before requesting the construction projects that will be needed for the future. The bill also includes $64.7 billion in discretionary funding for the Department of Veterans Affairs, which is $1.5 billion more than, 20 year, uh, than fiscal year uh, 14. This includes $20 million more than was requested to get the claims backlog and $17 million more than was requested for the electronic health record. Uh, however, our responsibility uh, for our veterans just certainly does not end with our funding. We absolutely have to make sure that money is used uh, wisely. And while we recognize that their, the Veterans Affairs Administration has made uh, uh, progress on the claims backlog and we've given them additional funding to speed the interoperability of the electronic health record, it's, uh, they simply have to become interoperable as quickly as humanly possible with the DOD. I'll never forget the story you told, Mr. Chairman, the young man in your district who lost sight in one eye in active service, and then because of the inability of the, of the DOD medical records to talk to the VA, he's now permanently blinded. That really stuck and stays with all of us and worries us. And we have, in uh, cooperation with Mr. Bishop, the subcommittee members, uh, we've taken the oversight of these issues very, very seriously. So we've not only uh, we, we've we've uh, included language, Mr. Chairman, to in, uh, continue the reporting requirements. We've We've restricted, in particular, we've uh, the 75 percent electronic health record uh, funding until the VA takes the next steps to assure that this record will be absolutely interoperable with the Department of Defense. Something I learned from you on Homeland Security years ago works. They got to earn their money. Works. Limit the availability of construction funding to five years so the veterans do not wait endlessly for the completion of a hospital. And with this bill, uh, members, we've once again been able to protect the high quality support and services provided to our troops, our veterans, and their families. I genuinely want to thank all the members of the subcommittee who participated in so many ways and helped uh, make this bill uh, what it is today. I know that we've moved very quickly since the budget was released, and um, I genuinely appreciate your hard work and responsiveness during these busy, busy weeks. But above all, I'm uh, always especially grateful to my good friend, uh, Mr. Bishop, from the great state of Georgia, with whom I think all Texans feel a special kinship with the uh, folks in Georgia. I know that he agrees we're very, very fortunate to have Chairman Rogers and Ranking Member Lowy uh, on our subcommittee uh, with us, an uh, uh, indication of how extraordinarily important the issues are that we deal with here, to have you, sir, and, and, and you, Ms. Lowy, here with us. It's a privilege and, uh, to serve with both of you and a source of great joy. I mean that sincerely. Our veterans. Our men, men and women in uniform should have absolutely no doubt of the unanimity of the support of the United States Congress for the work that they do. And I'd like at this time to ask my very good friend from the state of Georgia and ranking member, Mr. Bishop, for any remarks that he'd like to make. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And let me just take this opportunity to join you uh, and other members of uh, the subcommittee uh, as we remember uh, the tragedy at Fort Hood. Uh, and uh, our thoughts and our prayers are with uh, all those who were impacted and affected in those families. Um, I hope, uh, Mr. Chairman, as we begin the FY15 appropriation cycle, that we can have a bipartisan regular order process and the Milcon VA bill can be used as a prime example of how to work together to get things done. Uh, I want to thank you for being inclusive, and I think we have a good product before us today. Uh, Mr. Chairman, one could call this bill a tale of two bills. Uh, the mill con portion of the bill is down $3.3 billion from last year's enacted level uh, for Title I and equal to the FY15 budget request. Uh, in my opinion, the FY15 request adequately provides for the Department's priorities uh, in military construction for each of the services. Uh, if the Department needed something, it's in the bill. And if it didn't need it, it's not in the bill. Uh, however, for the Department of Veterans Affairs, Title II is $1.8 billion above the FY14 enacted level, a 3% increase over FY14. Uh, very few agencies will be able to say that they fared this well 
are doing what I think history will call the budget cap years. While I'm pleased with the healthy funding increase for the VA, I'm still extremely <coughs> frustrated uh, with the claims backlog, which is still the number one complaint that I hear in my district. Uh, while the VA has made some progress on lessening the backlog, there's still over 300,000 claims considered as backlogged. Uh, so I was pleased to see an additional $20 million included in the bill to assist the VA to make even more progress on that backlog. In addition, uh, Mr. Chairman, it's my hope that coupling the Veterans Claim Intake Program with continued rigorous reporting requirements uh, while fully funding the Veteran Benefit Management System will encourage VA to make even more progress on this backlog. On the issue of electronic records, uh, you know our frustration on this issue, and I could spend all the time you yielded me just on this topic, but I'll say uh, only this, that I think we have finally gotten the two departments' attention, uh, and I hope to see some real progress uh, on this very soon. Finally, uh, uh, I'm very pleased that you chose to craft a clean bill. Uh, I thanked you in our uh, private meeting, and I want to again thank you today publicly for providing a clean bill uh, for the subcommittee to consider. Uh, I believe that the subcommittee bill will uh, represent a, a good, reasonable approach, and it continues our long commitment uh, to our nation's veterans and our military facilities. Uh, your mark has done a lot of responsible things, and if this bill remains intact, I believe that we'll be able to report out a bill with strong bipartisan support. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Bishop, and it's a privilege for me to recognize our full committee chairman and to have uh, our first bill out of the gate for you, Mr. Chairman, to set the standard uh, for all the others to follow. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And like you and the others on the subcommittee, we're all uh, astounded by the unfortunate uh, occurrences at Fort Hood. And for those families uh, of uh, deceased members or injured, members, we are indeed uh, thankful that, that they're okay, but also to wish them our condolences and our good wishes and our prayers. Uh, so I know I speak for all of you when I say that. Well, you're making history, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Ranking Member. This, this is the first of the 12 bills uh, to be marked up. And, fr and, 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 and as you know, we're going very early this year. Uh, in fact, uh, this is the earliest that any bill has been marked up uh, in this committee since the advent of the Budget Act itself in 1974. It may be even earlier than that, uh, because, but we can't find the records. But, uh, <laughs> but at least since the advent of the Budget Act, you are making history here today, and I congratulate you and the members for, Thank you, number one, a good bill, but also doing it uh, in a very timely way and making history. So congratulations and Thank you, good sir. luck to you. And our wonderful staff. Could have done it without And your great staff. Folks. you got a great staff. Well, it's the first of the 12 bills, and by the way, at my goal, Nita Lowy's goal is to uh, mark up every single bill uh, and do it as quickly as we can. My goal is to have all of the bills through the full committee by July 4. Uh, that's ambitious, but uh, we've got some very good talent to make it happen. This is, of course, the first bill. Uh, prime example, I think, of bipartisan collaboration. Congratulations to you. Uh, the bill addresses the most urgent needs of our nation's veterans and the construction priorities across uh, DOD. Uh, you've, uh, you have assessed every penny that is available to you that the bill appropriates uh, for, uh, making, I think, responsible decisions that align funding to results and requiring stringent oversight of the relevant agencies and withholding funds uh, when those agencies do not do according to the congressional wishes. Specifically, uh, you fund the hospitals, schools, family housing that support our dedicated service members in DOD. 
Uh, it uh, fulfills our commitment to these brave men and women during their active duty service time, but it also ensures that our veterans and their families have access to the quality medical care, job training, and education, and other benefits uh, to which they are entitled after serving our country with distinction and honor. I'm particularly pleased that you uh, continued to place a high priority on reducing the shameful backlog in disability claims within VA, providing an additional $49 million over 2014 to be used in part for the digital scanning of health and benefit files so that the VA can process these claims more rapidly. That's key. And it's proven that it works in speeding up the, the, uh, the uh, judgment on these claims. In addition, uh, the bill also uh, will ensure that VA is satisfactorily implementing uh, that strategic plan for electronic health records as well as moving forward with DOD on that interoperable e-health platform. That's absolutely essential. And I can't understand for the life of me why it's so difficult for DOD and VA to mesh their computers. I mean, we've been to the moon. Uh, and Why can't we just mesh the uh, interconnections between the computers at, at VA and DOD? So that when a soldier is a veteran and has to go back to the VA hospital, the VA doesn't have access to DOD hospital records when he was injured in, in war. Uh, and uh, I, I guess possession is nine-tenths of the law, but uh, if, I, if, this, if, if, I, if it's shown that uh, the problem here is the uh, desire of these people to hold on to their little corner of things without sharing it, they'll be held to pay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so this needs to be done, it has to be done, and will be done. Uh, and we'll want to know what the backlog, what, what the problem is in making it happen. So I, I, I'm sure you will, uh, your, and your counterparts will bird dog this. Yes, sir. Relentlessly. And let us know what else you may need to make it happen. Uh, because that's, uh, that's beyond, uh, beyond shame. In fact, that soldier you mentioned was in the office last week. Uh, he's blind, of course. Now working at, in, Cal in Sam Forest District at Monterey. Uh, and uh, in computer sciences, even though blind. Uh, and as you recollect me telling that story, he uh, he was injured in uh, a, I guess I think Iraq, a very se serious injury to his head, and it destroyed one of his eyes. But he had some vision out of the other. But that, as he became a veteran, that deteriorated, and he went to the VA hospital uh, to about this eye that was going bad. Uh, as well. And uh, the VA hospital couldn't do anything about it. They couldn't operate because they didn't know what had happened up there before when he was operated on in the hospital in Germany at DOD. And they couldn't get the DOD records. And so they were afraid to do anything for fear of even worse consequences. So that left eye then deteriorated and it's now gone. So he's completely blind. Uh, and the records in the hospital at DOD were never given to VA. That's uh, so that's unacceptable. Uh, and these, these people who've dedicated their life and now their eyesight and limbs and everything else for the uh, benefit of this country, we cannot afford to have that kind of uh, negligence, at the very least, uh, take place with taxpayer dollars. So um, we need a seamless method to provide health care to those war fighters and veterans. This bill moves that forward. Unfortunately, uh, at yesterday's tragedy at Fort Hood, 
uh, as it demonstrates this need to provide our returning vets with the right care to treat the wounds of battle both in mind and body becoming more apparent uh, and uh, I, I know that our thoughts and prayers remain with that community but it's unacceptable that we are not helping enough those veterans coming back wounded in mind as well as by. So Mr. Chairman, uh, you and your ranking member Mr. Bishop I think have put together a good bill. Members of this subcommittee have worked hard. This is a this is a, not one of the biggest bills, but one of the most important bills. And I appreciate the work of all of you. Thank you, and I yield back. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. There is something specific that uh, we could all do in helping to bird dog this with the electronic medical records. And I know, Ms. Loy, that you you also serve on the Department of Defense, uh, the uh, arm, the uh, you know subcommittee for for DoD. We need to be sure, Mr. Chairman, that we've got identical language. We need to have identical language in that DOD bill as well as ours uh, to bird dog this relentlessly until the medical records are seamless, interoperable. If you can run a Microsoft Windows program on an Apple Macintosh computer, by golly, the Department of Defense records ought to be able to be run on. Uh, they ought to be able to talk to each other. If they can solve it, surely DOD and VA can. And it really is a privilege for all of us to have you with us, uh, Miss Loy, one of my favorite people in Congress, and it's oh. my privilege to recognize uh, the great lady from uh, the state of New York, our ranking member, Miss Loy. Thank you, uh, Chairman Culberson. First of all, I appreciate your kind words, and I do look forward to the entire body working as well together as this subcommittee and I thank you very much and it's a pleasure for me to be here with ranking member Bishop the two of you have worked so well together and of course I'm always pleased to be here with Chairman Rogers and we look forward to the completion of all of our work Amen. Amen. <laughs> um, I too uh, before I begin want to take a moment and send our thoughts and prayers to those involved in this horrific event that occur occurred yesterday at Fort Hood. As the committee begins consideration of the 2015 spending measures, I'm pleased that the bill that we're considering represents a reasonable approach and has a good chance of enactment without any controversial riders. Despite fiscal constraints, this bill would meet the needs of military service men and women and continue to support our veterans. I'm pleased the committee is placing more emphasis on the increased need for prosthetics for our female service members. The committee must continue, as we've all been saying over and over again, to track and provide vigorous oversight on the VISTA Evolution Electronic Health Record to ensure its capability and interoperability with whatever system the DOD eventually selects. An overall increase above the FY 2014 enacted level to the IT account should help the VA move forward. This bill also takes several steps to reduce the disgraceful veterans' claims backlog. The committee has previously provided VA with additional resources, and this bill would provide $173.3 million for the Veterans Benefit Management System, an additional $20 million to the Veterans Benefit Administration for digital scanning of old paper files. And in fact, if you all haven't seen those boxes of the old paper files, we should send that picture to the Defense Department daily just to remind them of the urgency of this situation. And an additional 20 million to the Veterans Benefit Administration for digital scanning of these files the centralized mail initiative and staff overtime. Withhold 75% of, of the VISTA evolution funds until the VA provides information on the system, particularly regarding planned interoperability with DOD. 
continued to require the VA to provide monthly reports on claims processing and remediation efforts for underperforming regional offices. While the VA has reduced the backlog, it is unconscionable that any veteran should die waiting for VA services. This bill provides the resources to end the backlog, and that is what we expect of the Secretary in 2015. And I do hope, Mr. Chair and Mr. Chair, uh, that the cooperation between the VA and the Defense Department is more efficient than it has been in the past. But this is a good bill. We should preserve it through the full committee and on the floor. And I hope the cooperation with which we've worked on it will continue for the other 11 bills. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Ms. Lowy. I want to be sure to ask any of the other members if you've, uh, anyone else have any uh, comments? Mr. Farr. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I wasn't really going to comment, but I think this is a uh, historical moment, and I think I've sat on this committee uh, longer than any other member in the room. Uh, I got on this committee because my district, as Mr. Rogers pointed out, has a lot of military in it. Uh, we have nine military operations, but we closed the largest uh, training base in the United States, which was Fort Ord, California. Huge devastating impact, 33,000 people getting a, and leaving it of a community only had about, collectively, about 100,000 people. So you can imagine uh, what the, it did on the economy. And my motivation was to get on this committee because it dealt with, uh, with ba base operations and base closures and real estate. Uh, through leadership, Mr. Rogers' leadership and others, they, when we first were on this committee, it didn't have to do with VA. And uh, that was in another that was in another subcommittee, and it uh, transferring it into this made this the first committee in either house to this day that has joint jurisdiction on DoD and VA. So the seamless uh, opportunity to be able to address issues like uh, backlog. And I think what it's what's very interesting is that we sort of have two backlogs here. We have backlogs with uh, the pile up people getting out of the DOD, Department of Defense. By the way, you can't get into VA unless you've passed through the Department of Defense. So, and then to make those records and to make the, the management styles compatible so that it doesn't disrupt lives. Uh, this committee has probably done more than any committee in either house to, uh, uh, to just make sure that that is seamless. And we're still not there. So we have, paid a lot of attention to the backlog on people, but we also have a backlog that the EOD's created on land, and that is when you close a base, uh, you leave a lot of real estate hanging. Uh, first of all, you can't even begin to deal with it until you clean it up. So we have a backlog on cleanup. Then you have a, a, a very complicated transfer process, uh, the BRAC transfer process. And I think it, again, uh, that we ought to be focusing on being able to at least um, make the transfer of land as smooth as we're trying to make the transfer of people. The land, in this case, doesn't go to the VA, it goes to the local community. But without that, you can't have successful economic development. And to be able to address these issues in, in, in this bill in such a uh, rapid response, I think is really, I'm proud of that. I'm proud to be on this committee. and. Uh, just like the thing, it's a historical moment, to, and Mr. Chairman, you've done a marvelous job of driving the train, and I appreciate it. Oh, we've well, done it all together. Thank you, Sam. And it, as I hope, as we all of us work arm in arm to ensure that these medical records are interoperable, seamless, transferable. Uh, remember that young man who went blind as a result, and he lives in your district, one of the most beautiful parts of the country, and he can't see it. I mean, it's heart. It just breaks my heart. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, uh, mentioning that young man uh, reminded me, he came to see me last week, and he has such a great attitude. He's so positive and optimistic and upbeat and looking forward and all of that, but it reminded me when he came to see me the first time a few years ago, he was, he was still optimistic and 
and, and forward looking even though he had this terrible problem but to demonstrate the the, atti the good attitude that these young brave soldiers have and I, I think he's typical uh, I, we got to talking about the, our home area down there and, and moonshine <laughs> and, and I said uh, I said to him would you, would, you, would you like a little shot of moonshine he said well I can be sure of one thing it wouldn't make me blind <laughs> <laughs> you bet. And something I really hope all of us remember, I mean it sincerely, that uh, the uh, defense subcommittee and our subcommittee have a special responsibility. This has been the law. This has been a requirement for years. They haven't done it. Let's make sure they earn it. They earn every dollar they get, uh, all of us together working with that subcommittee. Uh, but um, that's a great story, sir. Thank you, and something all of us to keep in mind. I do want to make sure to ask, and, and uh, not, not that I'm in encouraging it, but if anybody has any amendments at this time, certainly want to make, make the offer. Um, here and down, I do think it's important uh, for us to, and Mr. Chairman, I'm delighted to know that we're the first one out of the gate, and uh, that uh, we are, uh, you can't even find records of anybody going this early so far. No. So in that spirit, we'll move rapidly. And I would, uh, if there is no further discussion, like to uh, recognize uh, Mr. Nunley for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move this bill be favorably reported to the full committee. All those in favor will say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. The motion is agreed to. Members, if I could uh, remind you to please leave your copies of the bill and the report in the room. Of course, the bill is on the Internet, as promised, but the report we're still working through, and I'd ask unanimous consent that the staff be permitted to make technical and conforming changes to the bill and report, and without objection, it is so ordered. Subcommittee stands adjourned. <laughs>